Uh, excuse me, maybe for some inconvenience in presentation as I uh, uh, do not use uh, Microsoft PowerPoint uh, here, so maybe there will be some mistype or something like this. Uh, oh, it's the third one. Uh, and uh, we will start uh, with uh, counting function. So first of all, uh, I will open SPSS and UVS data file, and we will learn how to summarize data through counting. So what does it mean to count and uh, how to use this function uh, for your data? Uh, it. So let's imagine you have, for simplicity, three answers about questions like uh, <coughs> do you visit uh, football matches, yes or no? Do you visit uh, ice hockey matches, yes or no? And uh, do you visit, for example, ice figure skating? So let's uh, take football, ice hockey, and uh, figure skating. And individual respondents, let's uh, name them A, B, C, D, can give you different answers. For example, the first one, he or she is mostly keen on every sport uh, he or she uh, can uh, go to visit. So answer is yes, 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 or one, one, one usually uh, in classical coding. The second one is just opposite. So no visit at all, zero, zero, zero. The next one, maybe some mixture, football yes, ice hockey yes, but no figure skating. And the last one, maybe some lady interested in figure skating, the pattern like this one. And you can use maybe, instead of these three variables, and it's general approach, so you can have 10 variables, 100 variables, etc., etc., the approach by which you can count the occurrence of special values. Here, it would be maybe wise to find occurrence of these ones. It means visiting of individual uh, sports. So I would use some new variable, which can be called count or interest in sports, something like this. And the first respondent, as he or she visited all three possible sports, will get the value the first occurrence, the second occurrence, and the third occurrence of the one, so the value is three. So counting means trying to find occurrence of some special value, or sometimes range of values, in some limited set of variables. For the second respondent, what will be the value of counting of uh, number one? Zero, it's clear. The third one, that's two. And the last one, it's one. Okay. And we can say, okay, maybe this man or woman is not interested at all in these three sports. Uh, this is uh, slightly interested, more interested, and the most. Yeah? That's easy. So, that's possibility how to find occurrences of individual values in the set of similar variables. So that's theoretical description of counting. And now uh, let's uh, try to use a practical example. I hope uh, that uh, SPSS will work at least. And uh, let's try to find it. So if you go uh, into uh, transform and uh, the second option just after computation is called count values within cases. So that's this counting procedure. So let's choose count values within cases and the dialogue is very very similar to previous dialogue about computation. I think this was the last part of uh, the last lecture. So, first of all, you have to type technical name, such as count or sports or something like this, uh, which should be assigned 
to the name of individual column. So first of all, let's try to define some name of target variable with our proposals. No more than eight digits or letters. The first one must be letter. Uh, don't use another symbols uh, than from uh, English alphabet and uh, numbers and some special symbols such as underline. So what is proposal for the name? Count or according to our problem, we will discuss number of groups in which you are member. So we can call it, for example, member membership or something like this. So I will call it simply member. It's not functioning at all. So once again. Yeah, member. And now, uh, which variables we will use? So uh, I will first of all change the appearance into variable uh, variable uh, names instead of uh, values. Oh, the, the listing will be complicated slightly. And uh, membership for individual groups is included uh, in variables starting at uh, v12. That's membership uh, in some welfare organization. And the last one variable, if I do remember well, is V26. So there are uh, 15 uh, variables, including information whether you are a member in some special group or not. So you will take all these variables, so it means V12 up to V26 and move them to the set of variables. So V12, V13, 14, 15, 16, etc. up to 26. So here it is. So that's the list of variables in which we will try to find whether you are membership or not. And uh, if you are a member, it is coded as one in our data. If you are not, it is coded as zero. So here we have to define values for which we would like to find number of occurrences. So let's click on define values. And here you can define individual value that you are fi finding for system missing values or system or user missing values for some range or for uh, some range from minus infinity or some range till plus infinity. So for our purpose, we use, we trying to find how many numbers as one is present in our data in variable v12 up to v26. So you will type here only one. And then, of course, you have to click on add. And the result will be number of groups in which you are involved as a member. So click on continue. OK. And if you go back into your data set, excuse me for me, it will be slightly more complicated uh, step to find it. Uh, maybe I will not be successful at all, so I will uh, find it. So uh, I will, uh, instead of uh, it, uh, use some description. So let's go analyze descriptive statistics and descriptives and go to the end of the list. Okay. And move member and click on OK. 
and everything uh, is okay. So the minimum for our new variable, which is measuring in how many groups we are involved as uh, its members, so its minimum, uh, minimum is zero, and maximum shouldn't exceed uh, 15, but you can see that real maximum is nine. So somebody is member of nine of groups which were offered to respondents. So this is possibility how to use counting for computation of new variable which you can use for further analysis. And now the last question is what uh, is uh, uh, this variable in our typology, whether it is nominal, ordinal, or scale cardinal? What type of variable we are preparing by counting? Is it nominal, ordinal, or cardinal? It is number of occurrences in some set of data. So for example, if your value will be eight and your friend's value will be four, you are a member of four more groups than your friend. So it's cardinal variable. So by counting from original binary data, or let's say uh, nominal data, we can create data of cardinal <coughs> properties. So that's possibility how to combine data and uh, use counting for them. So now you should know how to recode data, how to compute new variables from your variables, and how to combine data by counting. Okay. So, that's it, and now I will open the first presentation and uh, we will discuss briefly about frequency tables. Uh, as far as I know from your homework, uh, so most of you know something about frequency tables, so we can go through this topic uh, very quickly and uh, we can only learn something new uh, where we can find frequency tables in SPSS environment and I will show you also some more advanced procedure which is called uh, custom tables which can handle frequency tables as well as more complicated tables. So, what is frequency table? So I would say that we discussed quite a lot about descriptive statistics, about mean, modes, uh, medians, about standard deviation, uh, skewness, kurtosis, but frequency table is also descriptive statistics, especially for nominal and ordinal data. If you have data which are cardinal, it usually uh, is not useful strategy to apply frequency tables. So if you have nominal data and ordinal data, it's good, but for cardinal it's not good, as the table will be very, very long and it will be quite boring to read it. There is quite a lot of information included in frequency tables, you will see below. And the basic question, of course, which can be answered uh, by frequency table is, how many respondents belong to individual categories? So counts or frequencies, this is the most important part at the beginning, I would say. So here you have a very simple example of a frequency table uh, about the statement that society doesn't support uh, women. That was original question and possible answers uh, was the scale starting at uh, strongly agree uh, and the last one option was uh, rather disagree, uh, strongly disagree. So that's all. And here the first column in frequency table is called frequency and uh, it is about number of respondents for individual categories. So for example here in our data 15 people strongly agree with the statement. 101 rather agree etc etc and at the end there is something that is called total and we can read here that 657 people answered to our question. Then there are two more columns, we will discuss about it. So uh, uh, let's go <coughs> to the next column. And here the percent or percentage says what is this proportion of the first 
answer from all possible answers or how many respondents are included here as the proportion from the total number of respondents. So 15 divided by 657 and recomputed by uh, multiplying by 100, it makes 2.3 percentages and all other percentages are included. And uh, the next column is called proportion uh, without missing. It's valid person. So if you will have some missing data, doesn't matter if it is system missing or user missing as we discussed previously, this valid person will exclude all values which are missing for computation. And last column is called cumulative person and it's only very simple cumulation of previous column. So the first value is the same as previous valid person. As you sum up only this value and nothing else. The second value is this one value plus this one. So it's 17.7. .7. The next one is this one plus this one plus this one. It means 41.7, uh, etc., etc. And at the end, the last row, last possible answer, there must be 100. As the sum of all these is also 100. Okay, why is it important to have such complicated table here? You may be asking about. Here you have uh, only a very simple example of missing uh, of data. So if you have missing data, so here are included some frequencies, some percentages, but there is a blank space here, as we discussed previously, as it is only for those who are not missing values. Okay, now some questions. If we would like to find median or maybe mode in frequency tables, whether it is possible and where we can find, where we can find median, where we can find mode. So, if uh, I uh, will uh, go back, I hope so, it will be possible still. Yeah. So, oh, excuse me. So, let's use once again this picture and let's try to say where we can find mode, the most frequent value or how we can find mode from frequency table. So that's very easy. We will go to this column and find the most frequent answer and that's rather disagree. Yeah? So that's the mode for our data. Very simply. You do not have to count it. You can only have a look at frequency table and that's it. That's easy. Now, maybe more complicated question, how to find median? So it means some value in the middle. If you make ordering of your data or you make rank from your data from the lowest to the highest, which column can help to find median? The first one, second one, third one, or the fourth one? Last one, okay. And where we can find median, how to find it? We can go down and down and try to find the first value which is 50% or higher. And you can find it is this one, so median, Opinion about society doesn't support women is rather disagree for our case. Is it clear or not? Easy. Okay. So let's go further. Once again. It's missing, median and mode. It was easy. And uh, of course, it's nice to say that uh, there are some alternatives uh, for frequency tables. So instead of frequency table, you can create par chart, bar chart, and uh, uh, you can uh, do more about graphics in SPSS environment. Uh, but uh, currently, I would uh, propose uh, to uh, use uh, SPSS. 
And now uh, I will show you where to find frequency tables and how to compute it. So if you like to compute frequency table, so it's very easy. We will go into analyze once again and uh, descriptive statistics and the first procedure included here, uh, I think we discussed about it previously, it's called frequencies. Once again, analyze descriptive statistics and frequencies. So here you have to find some variable or more variables and move them to the right side. So I will propose for simplicity to use the first substantive variable in our data set and its importance of work in our life. Uh, I think that coding was uh, one very important at all and five not important at all. So let's take importance of work as uh, the variable for computation of frequency tables. And now the question is, before the analysis, which results do you expect? Will be check people answering, okay, the work is important in my life or not? So. What do you expect? Those will be proportions of possible answers at the scale from one, very important, up to five, not important at all. Hmm? What are expectations? Especially Czech students can help us. Hmm? What do you expect to find? Most yeah, mostly important. Okay, so that's the beginning and uh, let's also uh, go into charts and uh, let's ask for simplicity for uh, pie chart. Okay, so here it is, one variable and we will get frequency table so we will be able uh, to discuss about distribution of individual uh, values and uh, we will also see chart and we will be able through frequency table to find median, mode, etc. So click on OK. And here it is. So that's frequency table. And you can see there are some NA and DK. Maybe they should be omitted from our analysis. So maybe we should go once again back and define these values as missing values. So we can do it. And then you can see individual values, very important, quite important, etc. And I would say that your expectation were correct as very important uh, answer uh, is uh, from approximately 1,000 of respondents from approximately 2,000 respondents in total, so it's approximately one half. You can see uh, that uh, precisely it is slightly less than 53 percentages. Quite important, etc., etc. So now, if we would like to be correct, let's go once again back into SPSS and uh, let's go into variable view and we will prepare a uh, definition of uh, DKNA. So let's go into column B1, importance of work, missing. And here you have to define discrete missing values. And for our data, I have to help you. So. Uh, it was coded as minus one, minus two, and minus three. So please type minus one, minus two, and minus three. Uh, so once again. It's not, yeah, minus one, minus two, uh, no, no, set, and minus three. So that's it. And if you defined your missing values, they will be omitted from valid percentages as far as uh, cumulative percentages. So once again, analyze, descriptive statistics, frequencies, and only OK is necessary to click as everything was previously defined. And as PSS remember last settings for all its procedures. So now you can see, it seems uh, quite nice. D, K, and A are omitted from computation of valid percentages, cumulative percentages, and it works. Okay, and now the question is, uh, what is median, 
and what is mode for our data. So the most frequent value is very important and median is also very important as more than one half of people answered, okay, import, uh, work is uh, in my life very, very important. And if you don't like tables, you can use instead of it charts. Okay, so that's short discussion about uh, frequency tables. And now I will show you some special tool, which is quite nice, which can help you to do better tables than only frequency tables and to analyze your data maybe more deeply. So we will discuss about custom tables. Uh, which you can find through analyze tables and custom tables. There is special possibility, I will show you how to do it, that you can merge more tables into one. So you can collapse, we can say, more than one frequency table into one big table and it's uh, easily to read it. So here is short description. We will go through it uh, in a SPSS environment. Uh, and uh, only one big warning. If you would like to use these custom tables, you must be sure before the analysis that your scales are correctly uh, <coughs> prepared. It means that measurements such as scale, nominal and ordinal, these are terms from SPSS, are prepared uh, correctly to your data. If not, this procedure will not work correctly as well. As it is prepared, if your data are scale, it means cardinal, it will compute uh, means. If it is ordinal or nominal, it will compute percentages. So you must set your scale. Here is a very simple example. Uh, so if you have uh, some variables, here it is, percentage of students uh, uh, with uh, uh, different language, uh, percentage of students with special needs, percentage of students uh, from disadvantaged homes. And here you can see that we have three tables, so you have three variables in one big table, and here you have some percentages which are called row percentages. We will discuss more about row and column percentages next time, so now take it as it is. But you can imagine that originally, if you have only one frequency table, these figures can be found in the first column of the frequency table. Okay, so that's it. And now uh, let's go uh, back to SPSS. Oh no. So here it is. And if you would like uh, to use uh, custom tables, so once again, go into Analyze, Tables, and Custom Tables. The first question is, okay, have you prepared your data correctly? Are your scales correct? It means this measure, whether it is correct or not. So I would propose uh, that we will work with V1, V2, V3 about importance of work, importance of uh, uh, family, and the last one, I think, free time or something like this. So uh, what are scales for these uh, uh, three variables? If it is rather agreed till, uh, excuse me, strongly agreed till, uh, 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 strongly, uh, no, 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 it's uh, very important up to not important at all. So it is nominal, ordinal, or cardinal? Cardinal. You mean, yeah? No, it's ordinal. Yeah, and it's correctly prepared for us. So we do not have to change it, but if it is not prepared correctly, you have to change it. So we can say, oh, okay, that's correct. And now you can see totally Different dialogue. Dialogue with rows, columns, and here is classical appearance, the list of all variables you can use at all. So, first of all, let's show very easy example. If you like to use only one variable, for example, importance of work, V1, so you will take this variable, 
you use mouse or you will click on the left button and move it to the row. Oh. Yeah. But you can see that by default, your result will be frequency table with only the first column, which is called count. If you would like to change it, and of course you can change it, you will go into summary statistics. And uh, if you like uh, not to use only counts, you would like also, for example, to see percentages. So you have to define correct percentages for your data. So for example, here for this table, uh, it would be nice to see column and percentages. So you will find column and percentages and move to the right. Then it's also uh, not very easy to guess, but you have to click on apply to selection. And then you can click on OK, and I hope we will be successful and we will see something like frequency table from previous discussion. Yeah? Only you can see that by default, uh, in custom tables, uh, missing values are omitted from the table. So it's not included, DKNA here. Okay, so that's easy frequency table. Next step, so once again, go into analyze tables and custom tables. And now I would propose, okay, we have importance of work, so let's add the second one variable, which is about importance of family. So take it and move both these variables. So now it works. So we have the first frequency table and the second one frequency table uh, uh, for two variables. And you can see, okay, 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 there is some mistake. Here you can see NAP, NADK. So let's go back. And what is necessary to perform? Yeah, of course. You have to go into uh, variable view once again and define missing value for V2 and V3 as well, as we would like to use three of these. Option uh, that you also can use is that you can copy this definition. You will take this one and control plus C, control plus V, and you can copy it. So I will take it. and copy. So you can copy it. You do not have to type it. You can copy it for the whole variables if you uh, select it by mouse. So now it's prepared. And once again, go into analyze, tables, custom tables. OK. And now we can take all three variables, importance of work, family, and the uh, last one variable and you can move it to the right side and you will create three tables for the one step only. So that's quite nice but still maybe it's not the best one option you can take as if you have questions with the same possible answers it would be much nicer to have these labels here in columns and to see one table and you can compare figures very easily. Following steps uh, you have to go. So first of all, let's go into summary statistics. Summary statistics. Uh, excuse me, not summary, yeah, summary statistics, but you have to click correctly, not as me. And please replace count by row percentages. So we will don't use count and we will use row percentages. And the next step, once again, apply to selection you have to click on. So that's the first step. And then the next step is you will go here to category position and change it, row labels in columns. And you can see now it works. And if you click on OK, that's nice. 
you have three frequency tables as three rows, and you can directly, for example, compare what is the most important phenomenon for check respondents. What is it? Work, family, and friends. And family seems as the most important. Maybe it's only a politically correct answer. I don't say this is right result about Czech society, but this is result of our survey. Okay, so that's option how to use custom tables for merging many frequency tables into one uh, quite easy uh, step. Uh, and I hope you will like this module as well as I like it. So, and uh, now it's time to move forward once again. So I will uh, open the fifth presentation. And uh, we will discuss briefly about sampling and uh, sampling procedures. So, first of all, the question is, why do we carry out some samples? Uh, so, first of all, we have to use uh, two terms, sample and population. So, if you carry out some social science research, you are mostly interested in some big society, in some big population. What can be the population for research? Uh, mostly we are interested uh, uh, in adult people. So we would like to know what Czech adult and American adult and German adult, etc. Sometimes the population can be quite different. Yeah? Uh, you can be, for example, interested in behavior of kids. So your population will be kids maybe from three till seven, eight years old, blah, blah, blah. So that's the population. So we are usually interested in some special group. All people in this group, in usually special country, we call population. Sometimes, instead of population, we use also expression target group. OK. And now, if you imagine that you would like to perform your research, for example, only in small Czech Republic, for all adult people, so how many people would be included in this research? What is the number of adult people in the Czech society? Yeah? I would guess maybe eight and slightly more, uh, as approximately 100,000 kids every year. Uh, so if you take uh, 18 years, so it's uh, slightly less than uh, 2 million, and the total population is at least above 10. So, okay, 8 million people. Now imagine that you try to perform research and try to ask 8 million people. It's time consuming and I would say mostly money consuming strategy. So it's nearly impossible. Of course, uh, there is special research called census, which you usually try to uh, go for every uh, household and ask everybody. But money, money, money is the reason why we do sampling instead of asking all people from population or target group. And uh, the problem is, okay, so we replace the population by the sample. Sample means it's only a small piece uh, of the whole population or target group which we will use for some basic information about the population. So first of all, from the population, we take the sample but at the end, we would like to infer, to generalize our information from the sample once again back to the whole population or target group. And this procedure is made by uh, something what is called statistical inference. Excuse me for this red color, but uh, uh, it doesn't work here, so I will uh, uh, change it for the next time. If we would like to know something about samples, so there are at least two basic strategies how to perform sample. It's slightly more complicated, but uh, for our purposes, it means for this introductory course, it's necessary uh, uh, to differentiate between two types. 
First one is called random or sometimes probability sampling. And the second one is usually generally called purposive sampling. So now, very quickly, uh, let's discuss about these two types. So maybe somebody can help me. What is probability or random sampling? How to perform random or probability sample? If you have some population or target group, how to prepare only sample, only part of this population, which will be randomly or by probability rule selected? Hmm? Some ideas? Some proposals? We are not discussing now techniques by, of collection data, but how to select randomly some part of the population which will be collected as sample, and then we will ask these people who are selected so from the sample, and then we will discuss about the results and try to generalize. So how to select the sample randomly or by probability rules. So let's have very easy, for example, uh, 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 example uh, such as uh, random uh, selection from students at our faculty. So I or my colleague uh, would have access to the list of all students who are enrolled at our faculty. So maybe it can be some Excel sheet, it can be the list uh, uh, which is on the paper, but there is a list of all students enrolled at the faculty. Uh, and then we can randomly select for example, we can take all your names into the head and shake it and then randomly uh, pick up maybe 10 students who will be randomly selected. So that's very easy random sample. Usually we use uh, uh, this random sampling uh, which is uh, performed by computers. We don't use heads currently. But of course, you can use head as well. It will be also random approach. A uh, real problem for real uh, uh, populations is that usually we do not have list of all people who are living, for example, in an individual country. Of course, there is some official list of all inhabitants in the Czech Republic. I hope so, that at least uh, Czech police or Czech Ministry of Interior uh, own this list. And also all hackers know about it. But, we are not hackers as researchers, so we have to change it and uh, try to perform it another way. So we do not use something what is called simple random uh, sampling. Uh, sometimes in literature you can find SRS acronym only, but we have to use some more complicated designs for random sampling. So the most common sampling uh, we use at least in the Czech Republic and in Europe, is called multi-stage sampling. So what does it mean? How do we find a respondent? Uh, how to select people randomly without a list? So the first stage or the first step can be, we can, for example, find the list of all cities and villages in the Czech Republic. It's publicly available, so you can download it, uh, for example, from the website of Czech Statistical Office. No problem at all. And if you know, for example, you would like uh, to prepare a sample of 1,000 people, so first of all, you will take the list of all cities and villages, and you will randomly select 1,000 of these cities and villages. That's easy. Then you can go into these selected villages or cities, and as the second stage, you can, for example, randomly select the street. Once again, it's publicly available list. Then next stage can be, for example, to select uh, some special uh, <coughs> house or flat in the street. And the last stage can be to select some person according, for example, uh, to method of the nearest uh, birthday or something uh, like this one. Procedure, which is once again random. And by four stages, or maybe sometimes more stages, you will randomly select people at the end. And all these procedures are covered only by the random process. So there is no insight of the researcher, so you do not influence your results. You are only randomly, randomly selecting, 
and according to these procedures, then you will get data by which you can use something what we will call magic or some equations uh, such as testing and confidence interval. We will discuss it uh, next time uh, by which you can generalize your data from the sample to the population if it is randomly selected. But mostly, especially once again, money and money, money is the reason as this procedure of multi-stage sampling is quite expensive. So mostly we don't flow these random or probability samples, but we carry out something what is called purposive sample. And the most common strategy, especially in Europe, I know in the US uh, there is a big discussion about this technique, uh, is called uh, quota sampling. So what does it mean and how we perform sample which is called quota sample? So, let's uh, use once again practical example. You would like, for example, to perform once again sample with 1,000 adult people in the Czech Republic. So, what do we know about Czech population, about Czech adults? So, at least we know from official statistics, once again, we can go to website of Czech Statistical Office, the proportion of male and female. That's what we know. We know also something about uh, educational structure uh, for people in the Czech Republic. We also have some information about structure by age for the Czech adult people, etc., etc. So we have quite some very, very uh, important information about Czech population. And if you perform quota sampling, so you would like to prepare your sample to be nearly the same as the population, for example, by the structure of gender, age, and education. And you will take official data from Czech Statistical Office and you will divide your 1,000 people who would, who would like uh, to be selected into individual categories according to gender, age, and education. So for example, then you will have in your sample two people who are male with primary education uh, who are 60 years or older, etc., etc. You will divide them into these individual categories and then you will start to find these people. They will not be randomly selected. Maybe they will be your friends if you will carry out this research, but they will follow this criteria. And at the end, if you collect all your data, so your sample should be the same as the population by gender, age, and education. But the problem is that all other properties, for example, opinions which you collected can be totally different from the population uh, opinions. But in practice, it works. Uh, I, if I do remember well, so it was uh, 1936 uh, case of pre-election polls uh, uh, in which George Horace Kalup, well-known researcher, uh, used uh, this quota sampling and uh, he was very successful in forecasting of uh, results uh, for presidential uh, elections. But in 1948, if I do remember well, uh, quota samples uh, were quite uh, uh, bad in this forecast and that's why in the US uh, they do not use it uh, uh, quite often uh, in comparison with Europe. But once again, let's try to summarize uh, our information. You can perform probability or random samples, you can perform some purposive sample, mostly quota samples, but only for data who are <coughs> carried out by random or probability samples, you can use flowing uh, computation tricks uh, for confidence intervals and statistical tests. If you have quota data, uh, quota uh, sample data, you are not allowed to use it from statistical point of view. But I don't want to lie about it. Uh, so in practice, many researchers use these statistical magics also for quota data. So that's true. What's the time, excuse me? Okay, so uh, the last discussion uh, will be about standardized normal distribution. Uh, 
which is a well-known model, uh, which we will use also for uh, these magic formulas, uh, which will be followed. So what is standard normal distribution and uh, why is it important? So uh, we should say that uh, Karl Friedrich uh, Gauss, a well-known mathematician from Germany, uh, is uh, the author of this distribution. And uh, we can say that uh, in reality, quite a lot of variables follow this uh, normal distribution curve. Uh, uh, I don't want to discuss uh, why is it uh, called normal and whether normal uh, is correct expression for it. Uh, but uh, it's quite nice to know something about it. Uh, some properties which you should at least uh, remember. So if I say standardized normal distribution, so it means that the mean for this distribution is zero and standard deviation or variance is one. Sometimes uh, we use uh, the symbol N as it stands instead of normal and zero and one for mean and standard deviation or variance. So if you will see the symbol N01, it means okay, somebody applies standardized normal distribution. So here it is. Once again, excuse me that these colors doesn't fit original presentation, but you can see that free office doesn't follow uh, full office. But I hope you can see it at least uh, at your computer. So classical curve for standardized normal distribution is like this one. So sometimes in English we call it bell-shaped curve. As French people are usually sometimes strange and they have to use another expressions they use uh, for this distribution uh, description as it is uh, hat. So let's take it as it is. So you can use bell curve, hat curve, it's up to you. So it is symmetrical, zero is standard deviation and then we can take some ranges. So if you take the range plus one, minus one, so this range, so this space, covers approximately two thirds of all values. If you take the range, which will be plus and minus two, it covers approximately 95% of all values. And if you take more, plus minus three, and here it is, it is uh, called as six sigma rules. So nearly all values are covered. Uh, I think the correct proportion is 99.97 percentages covered by plus three minus three. So this picture is at least the original one, so that's fantastic. Uh, but what you should remember from these pictures is at least that 5% of all values are above approximately 2, if you would like to be more precise, 1.96 is precise value. So here you have approximately 2 and half percentages and here below minus 2 or minus 1.96, once again 2.5 percentages. So five percentages outside this range and 95 percentages inside this range. So this is maybe the most important part and you can here see another parts uh, which are covered by previous picture. So, and I think that's all for today. Uh, discussion about sampling distribution will be uh, slightly longer. So thanks a lot uh, for coming and uh, your homework. Uh, should be uh, very easy to guess. So let's try uh, to take uh, some variables uh, in your data file and uh, compute uh, frequency table and to interpret results. And the next task 
as it's also a uh, new uh, topic uh, in today's lecture. Uh, so let's try to apply counting. So let's try to take some set of variables and let's try to apply sampling. Uh, it's counting, excuse me, yeah, count. Counting procedure. Okay, are there any questions? Okay, enjoy quite nice autumn. I, uh, as far as I know, there is a forecast that at least for one week it will be very nice weather, so enjoy nearly summer, I would say, <laughs> in uh, the Czech uh, country. And next time we will discuss about magic formulas for generalization of your results from the sample to the whole population. So that's all.